Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, their creativity, and passion. We embrace all the arts, the traditional arts and the spiritual arts, to bring you diverse and quality interviews to watch and to be inspired by. Thank you so much for watching today. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. And today we have a guest visual artist. She creates body prints. And we're going to find out what these body prints are all about, these body print paintings. And she's also involved in some performance art. So we'll touch upon that as well. Again, thank you so much for watching. We hope you stay connected with us on social media, on our YouTube channel, Facebook, and Twitter. Let's go ahead and welcome our guest visual artist for today, Tamara Windham. Tamara, welcome. Hi, thank you so much, Leslie. I'm really um, excited about this. Oh, thank you, Tamara. We're so grateful that you're here and excited to find out all about your art. Um, okay. Well, I was uh, born and raised in Los Angeles, and I moved to New York City in 1979. So I've spent my adult life in New York City, though I've traveled quite a bit. And uh, I started making body prints in um, 1989 when I was an artist at, in residence at Kate Millett's farm in Poughkeepsie. Kate Millett is a very well-known feminist author. Her famous book is called Sexual Politics and she had an artist colony for women. Uh, she passed away a couple of years ago, but she was very prolific uh, writer, uh, made silkscreen prints, sculptures, a uh, very prolific and uh, passionate artist. And uh, so we had a, a art colony that was all women and I was the cook and uh, it was a Christmas tree farm. The, the selling Christmas trees paid for the art colony and the deal was that you would work uh, doing farm work on the Christmas trees in the morning. And then in the afternoon, you could work on your artwork. And I spent two summers there. And I had the idea to make body prints when I was there. And that's when I started. And it's a, uh, the only artist I knew of at the time who made body prints was Eves Klein. And I, I, I don't, I love his work and I hate his work. <laughs> I think he's a, a bit sexist. He, he liked to call his models living paintbrushes. And I felt like he just kind of reduced them to their bodies. And I have a different approach that I'll go into later, but I taught myself how to make body prints. And I came up with my own method, which is, um, using uh, non-toxic acrylic paint and uh, using a paint roller and rolling it onto the skin and then rubbing onto a cotton cloth. And when I first started, I thought of using myself. And so they were all self portraits. And I was at this artist colony with all these other artists women artists so it was very easy to get someone to help me and I would lie on my back and and then direct them and they would put the paint on me and then rub it onto cloth and um, as I kept working with it over the years I, I realized that I wanted to be the artist and not the model and that it was better for me to paint someone else because uh, then I would have more control over how the paint was applied. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a whole tradition of women um, doing self-portraits, uh, like Frida Kahlo is very famous. I uh, also loved um, Mary Beth Edelson, uh, who died recently. She did a lot of photographic self-portraits, and uh, uh, there's many 
quite a so so it was easy. Anna Mendieta used her own body. She's another artist I admire and used her own body. And uh, but I um, so I started out that way. But but now I I still do myself once in a while. But mostly I do uh, I use other people for models now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd like to find out from you, uh, Tamara, focusing on the body, um, whether it's your body or another body that you're doing the body print paintings from, uh, what is the, um, the relationship of using the body? Like why, why particularly that? What, what is the message that's coming forth? What is like the, you know, it seems like at the, um, the uh, art colony that you were with, like a lot of things, seem to further develop like um you know with um references to you know the female the female form and uh, i know that your your work also incorporates a lot of uh spiritual aspects as well the goddess there's, there's a lot that you like to play with in 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 your um body prints but can you touch upon like why why the body what what is the message what is the reasoning behind that well, the body is sacred. I, th I see the body is sacred. And, and to me, the body and the spirit are not two separate things that are opposed to each other, but that there, there is a unity, but different layers. And I, um, you know, grew up in a family and a culture where um, I was I mean, women are are pressured to feel both ashamed of their body and also to um, to exhibit their body. So it's it's a, a kind of two sides of the same coin. And I I wanted um, to embrace my body as something that I live in, and 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 not as. A, and not as something that's fragmented. So I make the body print, but that's only the first step in the painting. And then I, I, I build up paint to make an aura around the body to, to show the, um, the spirit, like em the spiritual light emanating from the body. Mm -hmm. And, and I, uh, um, when I first started making the body prints way back in, in 1989, um, I used my menstrual blood as paint some of the time. And I would, um, I would combine it with, uh, it was something uh, to help with screen printing that was like a gelatin type thing you would mix that I, I, I made this all up myself. Nobody taught me. So I, I, I've, I, I, I used something to, to thicken the menstrual blood and, I, and turn it into paint. And so my first body prints were of myself and my own menstrual blood. Menstrual blood is not archival, so it fades over time. It, it turns First it's bright red, then it turns brown, and then it just starts to disappear. Uh, but so then later I tried mixing red paint into the menstrual blood to, to keep some of the color. Now I'm um, menopausal, so no more menstrual blood for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> But, uh, but I wanted to, I mean, menstrual blood was something that, again, that I was raised uh, to think of as dirty and bad and, and, uh, and, and it was something I, I did not feel good about being a female growing up. And, and um, of a lot of um, the feminism that reached me was about accepting my own body and my own body processes and seeing my body and my body processes as sacred and uh and even empowering and uh it was a very liberating uh to accept my body and accept my menstruation and and uh 
not to feel ashamed and and uh and it was just a a wonderful uh thing for me to go through and uh, so i thank the feminist movement for that i thank the the goddess spirituality movement for that uh, that's my roots and my biggest influence Mm, yes, and your your vision and your message, Tamara, is so beautiful. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at a video where it's a, a walkthrough in your studio. Do you want to set this up? Is there anything you'd like to tell us before we take a look at it? Yeah, it was um, an excerpt. Uh, I had an open studio, so I I put out a lot of body prints and um, uh, some of them, they were, it was almost like a retrospective. So there were different time periods and, uh, and maybe I'll tell you a little more about it after we see it. Okay, sure, absolutely. Okay. All right, so I'll go ahead and pull it up. Give me just a minute. And we'll take a look. We'll have a nice walk through of your studio. And this one went through uh, several stages. Uh, it started out bright yellow with some words and I, I kept working it and reworking it. And I like a better blue. And this one, was made as a performance piece in May. It was the Milk Moon, and the body print was made in front of an audience while my friend played Tibetan singing bowls. And then the moon and the stars I worked on in my studio afterward. And the, the cloth is blue, and I only used white paint on that one. That's another one on the ceiling and here. This one is titled Angry Ghost and it's made uh, with two layers of body print. Uh, first a pink one and then a, a black one. And over the window I have a body print made with menstrual blood and the darker color is acrylic paint. And it's sometimes nice to have it with the light shining through it. And here there's a Greek inscription. It says, I am all that was, all that is, and all that will be, and no mortal shall lift my veil. This was an inscription on a statue of the goddess Isis and uh, the veil is interpreted to mean that we can't know everything, that there are things that humans can't understand about the divine and about the nature of reality. Mm -hmm. Isis was the great mother, so I put a baby about to be born. And the one below is titled Hidden Glory. This one is another version. Uh, it's made with menstrual blood and it's titled Turning within myself, I create again and again. All right. That gave us a really good feel for your body prints and, and um, your studio, and also the, the spiritual aspects of your, your art as well with, with the beautiful um, art and the, the reference to goddess Isis with the Greek inscription and um, the, the other Sanskrit. Uh, was that from the Bhagavad Gita? 
Yeah, it's from the Bhagavad Gita. And mm -hmm. I, uh, that particular line resonated with me as a, a creator, being an artist uh, and, and a creator. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the pose of that body print is turning. So it, it, it seemed to fit with that quote. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, I haven't, st I've studied the Bhagavad Gita um, uh, not extensively and not recently, but, but it, it is a, a, a beautiful, a beautiful text, a very ancient text. I, uh, I'm fairly, um, I'm fairly eclectic uh, in my studies. Um, I, um, I would consider myself a, a, a pagan, uh, uh, but I'm not, um, I'm not dogmatic. And I've, I, uh, I started out um, with kind of a Wiccan based uh, uh, goddess circle. There were, we had a circle with, uh, about eight women and it was very beautiful. It lasted for a while and, and then uh, women went their different ways. And uh, more recently I've, I've been studying more of the golden dawn tradition, uh, which is not, um, uh, cause it, it was the beginnings of modern magic. And uh, it was a, a group that started in, um, uh, the end of the 19th century in England, and they were hugely, hugely influential. And uh, uh, I, I wanted, I thought that would give me more basics. But uh, so anyway, in that video, there was, uh, it starts with this uh, blue one that uh, I meant it to, to look angry. And I uh, started it with red and yellow and then somehow it didn't work. I just kept painting and it, it turned out blue, but I, I was thinking more of the Me Too movement and all the anger that I've had over the uh, harassment I've had from men over the years. Uh, certainly as an older woman, I'm harassed much less than I was when I was younger, but the memory is still there. and. Um, and then it goes to uh, uh, one of my favorite paintings, The Milk Moon. And that was uh, two years ago uh, that I actually made that. Uh, we, we, my friend invited me. She is a performance artist and, and does, um, her name is uh, Maya Darren. She named herself after the filmmaker and she does uh, Tibetan gongs. And, and singing bowls. And she made the sound bath. And I started out leading people in a meditation that's uh, called, um, I'm having a brain fart. It's called the, the Tower of Light. It's a very beautiful meditation. It comes from a book called Psychic Self-Defense by Denning and Phillips. And um, I'm going to show you a little painting I made. I've made several of these paintings of it and some large body prints. This is a small study, but you imagine yourself within an oval and an aura, blue aura all around you as if you were inside a blue egg. And then you imagine a, a white ball of light over your head and the white ball of light is your purest, highest spiritual self. And then you imagine from that white ball, white light pouring into your body and then filling the whole um, egg shape with white light. And it's a very beautiful meditation. You can find it online if you Google Tower of Light. And so I led people in this um, 
meditation and I changed it a little bit for the full moon saying to imagine that the ball of light over your head was the moon so that you're filling yourself with lunar light. And then after everybody did that together, then we made the body print and uh, a friend of mine volunteered and um, laid on the floor and I uh, applied the, the paint to her skin, white paint. And uh, a couple of friends helped me lower the cloth onto her and then we, I have to rub, I have to literally rub uh, to make the paint stick to the cloth. And then we, we picked the cloth up um, and hung it. And the whole time my other friend was playing um, Tibetan singing bowls. And so it was a very lovely um, ritual uh, and included, you know, I invited my friends and my community and and it was really nice. And I, I've done um, a couple more with that basic format. Um, and uh, I wanted to do more, but then the pandemic came. <laughs> so we weren't uh, meeting in person anymore. But, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's see then. Um, Oh, and then I, I wanted to mention that one of the paintings was on the ceiling. And I, uh, I started doing that uh, partly because I ran out of wall space. But um, one of my paintings was the sky goddess. And it made total sense like to, mm. to hang it on the ceiling. I, I've never had any trouble with it falling down. I, um, I just use... Uh, heavy push pins and um, tack it up on the ceiling. And it's fun like to lie on the floor and, and look up at the sky goddess looking down on you. Mm -hmm. so. Tamara, it's, it's like um, you live in this like very magical world. And I, I see you as um, kind of wearing many hats, like, you know, one of your hats being artist, like magician, healer, you know, kind of also bringing forth, you know, a lot of the goddess energy and, and goddess information as well. And, and so that's so interesting. And I love, you know, what you shared um, about that some of the body prints um, were a collaborative effort from some of your performance art. That was sort of the, the actual creation of them. And then some of them are, um, as you mentioned earlier, are just of you and then some are of someone else. Um, as well. So they're, they're kind of created in a, a variety of, of different circumstances. Yeah, yeah, not most of my body prints are, are just made in my apartment. I, I make them in my apartment so that the model can take a shower immediately afterward. And, uh, and uh, I, I usually I need one or two assistants to help me. Um, the acrylic can dry fast. I, I can I can put some retarder in it, but I I have to. The body prints made pretty quickly, and um, and and I need someone to help me um, with the cloth because it's a, a little unwieldy for me to do it by myself if we're doing. The whole body and uh, and doing the whole body means that it's a it's going to be a fairly large painting mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah so most of them I've done in my studio but I've I've it lends itself to performance so easily that I've been thinking of ways to do more performance uh, art with it mm -hmm. and your performance art. Tamara, did you just naturally fall into that, that you that just kind of like another role you're just comfortable with? And then of course it relates to your art and, and you know, your different yeah. messages. Well, um, I, uh, performance art was, was a very exciting thing um, uh, that uh, I did with other students when I was in school. And uh, it's not, it's not acting, it's not like a, drama it's something uh different i i 
And um, I lean more toward ritual, though I've done other kinds of things. Um, some of my performances don't have anything to do with uh, body printing. I, uh, I'm interested in costumes and I've, uh, like one performance I did based on a childhood memory where I made a skirt with, uh, I can't remember how many pockets. I think it has 50 pockets. It has pockets all over the skirt. And when I was a kid, uh, we had a, a local fair and there was a woman called the pocket lady and she had a skirt with pockets all over it. And you would give her a ticket and pick up one of her pockets and there'd be a little toy inside. And so I, I recreated that and, um, I made it. Uh, I made it a little bit different, where I told people to make a wish, and then in, in the pocket was a tiny painting, uh, and then like a little. Um, I had to try it different ways. To it was funny how much people wanted it to be predictive, whether or not their wish would come true, and I. I realized I didn't want to tell anybody your wish isn't going to come true. So instead, I, I made the choice, your wish will come true easily, or your wish will come true, but you're going to have to work really hard for it. <laughs> that was uh, so, so that was fun. And I did that at some street fairs and some, um, like sometimes they have, art walks where people would the galleries would all be open and i would just kind of hang out and and I, i've done that i i had another one um where i have another costume that's a gray robe with ties on it that's meant to be versatile that i can tie different objects on it and i had um these x's like tied on the robe and a veil over my face all I was all in gray and I was meant to be a, a crone like a an older woman who's has knowledge and I made little cards uh, with pictures of different paintings of mine and then on the back would be a quote from uh, ancient writing, like ancient poetry or ancient hymns. And it was meant to be kind of like an oracle card. And I would just stand there and uh, at like a performance event and people would approach me and I wouldn't say anything. I would just hand them a card and that was like their oracle. And mm. uh, so yeah, so I've done different kinds of performances, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad that you share that. It's such fascinating uh, concepts and fascinating ideas, and then you know artistic, um, you know expressions um, with the apron with many pockets, and then uh, or the, the costume with many pockets, and then also the robe with um, the tie, and then the oracle, and the, the whole reference to you know the, the ancient writings and that the whole thing is really fascinating. And um, you're really full of lots of original ideas and, and also almost kind of like a wisdom keeper and, and wisdom dispenser as well as, you know, we're, we're chatting here that, that seems to, you know, be surfacing um, as well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I have um, a group um, of women that meet and we uh, study the goddess and, and uh priestesses and ancient traditions we we meet in my apartment or we used to we didn't during the pandemic but uh sometimes um so i i'm continuing continuing to learn about all of this it's it's uh there's just there's so much to learn you know and there's so much but um 
Shall we see some of my my paintings? Yeah, let's go ahead and start with that. So okay. I'll pull them up just okay. a moment and we'll get to them. All right. So this is a, a body print of a woman. And I thought um, she came out looking, to me, she looks kind of masculine or androgynous in the body print. She doesn't so much in person, uh, but the body prints um, come out different ways. And I, I've titled it Birth of a Star. And um, in astronomy, a stars start out as nebulas. That's like a gas, gassy clouds. And um, gravity pulls the, the gases together till they solidify. I'm, I'm not explaining it like an astronomer would, but that's kind of basically it. So this isn't meant to be a scientific illustration, of course, but I, I ha had the idea of, of, you know, something forming. And um, it, it, the body prints are so interesting because it's, um, it's like, uh, it's, I actually know how to draw. Um, uh, so, but it's not drawing, it's from, uh, an imprint. So, and it was like people were aware in the past that um, a drawing is an interpretation while a, an imprint of a body seems more objective. And before they had photography, um, like these imprints were like evidence that somebody was actually there. And we have like the most famous one is the Shroud of Turin, uh, which I've, I haven't seen it in person, but I've read a couple of books on it and have studied it. And I, uh, I, I respect it as a, a, an image of uh, religious veneration. I, I, I don't believe it was actually Jesus. I think that um, there, the church records show that in the Middle Ages, an artist confessed to having made it. And it looks to me like a body print, except for the face, which um, they used a mask, because uh, the face of the Shroud of Turin doesn't have the kind of distortions that happen uh, in a body print, but it's a, a wonderful object. And, and, um, and it's so interesting that um, her body print came out a little different than what she actually looks like. It looked, it came out with this very muscular looking arm and mm -hmm. uh, she just looks so powerful. So you can show another one if you like. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Okay. And um, this one uh, is called Stella Maris, which means star of the sea. And she has a, a seven pointed star over her head and then the crescent, crescent moon above and on her chest, uh, between her breast, is a ship. It's a. It's actually from a Viking petroglyph, and then she has like an aura, and she has the waves around her. And um, Stella Maris is a title of the Virgin Mary, but it's older than that. It's it's a. Um, I believe it's a was a title of Aphrodite who was born out of the ocean, born of the sea foam. And, um, and 
of course, um, sailors in the past relied on stars for navigation. Uh, so like a, the idea of star of the sea, like a guiding star. I mean, it's the only thing to guide you when you're in the middle of the ocean and there's no other landmarks. Mm -hmm. um, so, so here the goddess is, is um, someone to guide you through the, the oceans, through your journey. And you also feel that personally, don't you as well, Tamara? That you know the goddesses also are guiding you through your art and through your life and your interests and your passions. You you feel aligned with that? Yeah, I um, I have um, complicated feelings about um, goddesses, um, but I I um, I try to meditate almost. I meditate most days sometimes i miss a day and um i have started a, a devotional practice lately um of offering incense to a goddess and um i i believe that the divine is um beyond our full understanding that no one really knows the whole truth of the divine but we find what speaks to us and that all all religious traditions have some truth in them and um and i'm i'm kind of i'm actually more interested in um experience that i'm interested in dogma that i'm i i'm i'm interested in in finding practices that work for me and uh and that feel right and uh and i want to be open um to different viewpoints and and different possibilities mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing all this, Tamara, and I, I, I love these body prints. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. Okay. So um, I've, I've also made a lot of hand prints, and um, I started out making the hand prints just as a way to do a small study, because um, sometimes I don't always have the space to work on a large painting. And so a hand print is very simple. And um, they're usually my hand because I'm here and, and it's very convenient. Uh, and the hand prints started out being more simple, but then they've gotten more complicated. And uh, these are um, acrylic on canvas <clears throat> and they have layers of color. And I, um, there is a handprint under there, but I put so many layers on and I, I studied my own uh, palm and put in some of my own palmistry in these. And then in the corners are the four elements. Uh, earth, water, fire, and air, which um, the four elements was a concept, uh, I believe it came originally from Aristotle, though it, it might have come from Plato. I, I have to look it up now, but that it goes back to, to one of the two of them. And it was a concept that was taken quite literally for um, centuries until um, science advanced and uh, so, uh, but it's still uh, very useful to think of um, spiritually. And these four elements are uh, a foundational concept in Western magic um, and are used in uh, astrology and in tarot. And um, so they're at the corners and I, 
Um, and so these are two separate can canvases. They're like a, a diptych. Mm -hmm. I love the mystical quality and I love all the symbology and everything that you're sharing and how you know you tie in all these different areas and everything is relating back to the body. I mean, here we have your hands, we have the body prints and then what you elaborated on before Tamara with the costume. So everything is kind of focused on the body and also kind of giving these like spiritual messages and, and spiritual reflections. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. All right. Um, was there anything else you'd like to say or do you want to move to the next uh, one? Well, I, I'll, I can talk. I've made a lot of handprints and, and the handprints uh, certainly go back to um, the most ancient times our prehistoric ancestors made handprints in caves and on cliff faces and um, the handprint, it says, I was here. And uh, the hand is also what makes us human and what we create with that we have an opposable thumb and we can hold tools and make things with our hands. So the hand, uh, I've, I've also made small studies with my, with my feet and with my face. Uh, make, making it with my face is the most uncomfortable in a way, uh, but the hand was easiest, but then the hand just has all of this symbolism and this, all this tradition. The hand prints are also used all around the Mediterranean um, to ward off the evil eye. People in Egypt and Morocco and Spain and Greece uh, will put handprints on their doors to ward off the evil eye. So there's a lot of traditions. And um, Tibetan monks um, have also made handprints. Some of the Tibetan uh, Tonka paintings have handprints of, of of monks on, on them. So there, there's handprints all over the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. Let's go ahead and go to the next one. All right. So um, I made two versions of this painting. This is the first version I made and I made it, um, I made the body print uh, for a performance. And it had to do, um, the performance was called Climate Grief. And I'm very, very worried about um, climate change that I actually would call climate crisis or climate emergency, because uh, things are, are really, um, in, we are really in an emergency. Uh, and it, sometimes it's hard to tell in your daily life, but um, the, the polar caps are, are melting. Uh, there's floods and famine all over the world. Um, I eventually focused on the uh, forest fires that were um, worldwide, um, I, I guess it was a year and a half ago, uh, there were fires in Australia and in Brazil and in California and in Africa and um, I think in Asia, like like everywhere, the the earth is is drying up from um, uh, the earth is getting warmer and and. Uh, and it just broke my heart um, reading about the fires. Fortunately, um, there were no forest fires near New York City. So I uh, couldn't witness the, the fires firsthand. Uh, although um, I had a family and friends in California, so that made it very close to home. And I talked to them and they talked about um, 
so much smoke in the air that it burned their eyes. And um, the performance um, was, um, I wanted to do a performance and have an audience. And since it was about climate change, I decided to make it uh, as part of a fundraiser for my favorite ecological group, which is called Sane Energy Crisis. They're, uh, excuse me, Sane Energy Projects, excuse me. They're based in, in New York and they are a very effective organization and they were instrumental in getting fracking banned in New York State. So that's a concrete accomplishment. And now they're working on fighting a, a pipeline that's being put through a fracked gas pipeline that's being put through Brooklyn. Uh, that's just outrageous. Uh, so um, I helped organize a fundraiser that had many different artists and performers uh, and we raised a lot of money. Uh, for my performance, it was very emotional. Uh, it was something I felt from my heart where I wanted to express the pain that I feel when I read about um, the extinction. So many animals are going extinct. Uh, it's, um, and, and they're going extinct from, mainly from loss of habitat, though from other reasons too. And I, um, I just started out talking about all the problems um, with pollution and climate change and loss of habitat. I had a script that I memorized. I, I don't have it memorized now, so I can't repeat it exactly, but I, I talked about animals going extinct and and uh, and the oceans being clogged with plastic refuse and and uh, uh, poisons in the air and the soil. And um, as I talk, I I get more emotional. And I, um, I tear, I had an old, very old t-shirt that was worn out, would tear easily. And I, I tore it off in my grief and rage and then started to apply paint to myself. And I started off with a gray that you can see still in the face mm -hmm. and then moved to a, a red paint. And um, I just started uh, screaming and wailing and encouraging the audience to scream with me and, and talk about how important it was to, how I, I remember I talked about how I, I felt numb, that I, I read all this stuff about the environment being destroyed. And my first reaction is just to feel numb and maybe to deny that it's so bad, but realizing that I really need to get out of this numbness and feel my feelings. And I started crying and screaming and uh, urged the audience to also get in touch with their feelings and that we all should be mourning and, and, and enraged over what's happening to our planet. And then at the climax, I, I put yellow paint on my hand and, and slapped it against my heart. And then I, I fell down on um, a cloth that was in front of me. I had like a, a pad and, and some cloth. So, uh, and then I get, and then, I pressed myself into the cloth mm -hmm. and uh, oh, and then I got up slowly and stood up. And then I, I um, asked the audience, uh, I should have had it written down. It was like, uh, we, we work together 
we can be there for each other and together and together we can find a way and i didn't give any specific answer i didn't think it was the place of an art performance to give a, a specific uh, political strategy but 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 I did I do feel that um, we all have to work together that it's good um, to uh, you know if you want to think of your own lifestyle and and try to you know, use less or, or recycle or eat organic food, all that is good. But what's much more important is that we come together and work with each other and that we confront the corporations because it's, it's not the individuals that are the main problem. The main problem, the, the corporate polluters are doing most of the damage. And um, so that was um, the performance part, and that was only the body print itself. And um, then I took it to my studio and worked on, on putting in a forest fire. And I um, was looking at uh, photos of uh, forest fires and uh, the photo I used for this painting was of um, of uh, a fire in California, and uh, so it's um, kind of a simple image of of the forest, just a, a row of trees, and and then the flames and the body print. Then I guess it's. I don't want to put a, a strict interpretation. Anybody can, I like the audience to bring their own interpretation, but the body print could be the spirit of the forest and agony, or it could be yourself, or there's different ways to interpret it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tamara, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop the screen share. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. You can see behind me, there's the one that I was talking about, and then there's the uh, second version. I, I did two of them. One body print was made for rehearsal. I rehearsed, uh, I did kind of a dress rehearsal. I should have mentioned, um, Performing with me for that one was um, my friend Eric Blitz is a drummer and he he did a very soft drumming behind me while I was speaking. And so Eric and I and some other people did like a rehearsal and then we did the performance. So then I had two body prints that were very similar. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so I did two different versions. Mm -hmm. I, I often do two body prints, uh, partly out of um, worry that one won't come out right. <laughs> but then I also uh, like to do variations, like, like, like when you're painting, there's so many different directions you can go. And so I want to try I, was, I like trying something similar, but a little different. Mm -hmm. and, um, I, and I made a lot of small studies. This is a, a little postcard size study of a uh, forest fire. I kept thinking of different ways how to paint the fire. And it, that was, uh, so I've done quite a few postcards uh, I also did some hands, these little, mm -hmm. I'm part of the mail art network. That's an international network of artists that have sent stuff, sent stuff to each other. Uh, Ray Johnson uh, is sometimes credited as the founder. Uh, and uh, this card, it says uh, peace in Sanskrit. 
above the hand. But, um, and then there, so I do a lot of small studies. Um, the, um, here is, um, these are the more simple hand prints that I do. Um, this one, I did like the palm of the hand in dark brown, and then the back of the hand in the lighter beige color. Mm -hmm. And I've done a lot of these. Uh, one reason is to try different colors and that I can, since it's smaller, I can do it faster and I can do different studies to try all kinds of different colors. Let's see, here's some, um, here's another, getting some glare. Uh, anyway, it's a, another small study of a handprint. And I love, I love to work in layers where there's, um, I use acrylic with a uh, medium that makes the paint translucent mm -hmm. so that you can see different colors underneath. And this one has um, my tattoo, which is um, the monogram of Queen Tamara. She was uh, the ruler of Georgia in the Middle Ages. And she has quite an interesting life story that I won't tell right now, but anybody can Google her. But it's uh, it's called the Georgian Knightly script. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I'll show, this is a recent painting I made. Uh, it was made for my friend. Uh, her name is Shosh. And she told me that her name means rose. So I have collaged actual roses in the corner and in the middle of the hand, mm -hmm. pressed roses. Uh, and then uh, she likes to study um, Yiddish. It's very important to her. And I found a uh, a Jewish poet, Jewish Egyptian poet, Edmund Jabez, and he lives in Paris. And a line of his poetry is, one rose is enough for the dawn. And so we um, translated it into Yiddish. And I, I wrote that around. So it's something very personal mm -hmm. to her with, for her name and and uh, so um, yeah, so I've done a lot of hands. I have piles, <laughs> piles of hand prints and piles of body prints. Mm -hmm. And um, eh, every once in a while, I'll do something else. Uh, uh, sometimes I print flowers. Uh, I can put paint on a flower and imprint it. Um, and I've been thinking, you know, you can print almost, you can make a print almost of anything if it's, uh, if it has a flat side or, or somewhat flat side. Mm -hmm. um, Tamara, I love everything that you shared with us from your body prints to your handprints and discussing the, the costumes, your performance art, the different you know um, causes that, that are uh, very near and dear to you. Like for example, we looked at the forest fire and the you know climate status, earth conditions, ecological situations, and and whatnot, and, and your your vastness of of knowledge and history, particularly um, ancient history as well. This has been such like a magical, mystical experience with you. Um, thank you for everything that you shared. We do have to wrap the show up. Um, we'd like to leave you with the closing comments, however you'd like to close the show, Tamara, and also let us know how we can stay connected with you. Thank you so much. Well, I, um, 
I want to thank you very much for for interviewing me and and thank you also for your service to uh, the arts community and all the work you've done interviewing so many artists and um, you know I'm I'm just continuing with my journey I I, I make art um, I'm just compelled it's it's part of my nature that I I need to do this and I hope to reach people who resonate with what I'm doing and that's the most important thing that that the art finds its way to the people that it speaks to um I have an Instagram account and it's my name, uh, Tamara Wyndham, T-A-M-A-R-A-W-Y-N-D-H-A-M. Mm -hmm. And my, um, I also have a website that's the same, tamarawyndham.com. And, uh, and I'm on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Tamara, thank you so much for being our guest artist today on Art and Talk and sharing your fascinating art journey. We wish you much success. And I, I love the whole experimental vibe and the spiritual vibe and the whole exploration that you take us on. And thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Tamara. Thank you so much everybody for watching Art and Talk today. We appreciate the time you take to check in with us and we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.